Hey everybody, welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Zach. Here we like to talk about overlanding, off-roading, and tech. And if you want to help support the channel, please drop a like on this video and consider subscribing if you like what you see. Additionally, I've got stickers on my website. If you haven't seen the pictures at the beginning or end of my intro, I am selling those on the website. And if you don't like stickers, comment down below what you'd like me to actually design up because I think the stickers are pretty sweet Overland Engineer merch. But if there's other stuff that you'd like to see, let me know down below. With that being said, let's jump right into this video. I'm really excited about doing this rig walk around of Ben's Lexus GX470. I love rig walk arounds personally, so I'm really excited to add more of these types of videos to the channel. So with that being said, let's jump right into the video. So Ben, do you want to just tell us a little about kind of the stock features of this car and, yeah. and what year it is, that sort of thing? Yeah, so it's a 2005 Lexus GX470. Um, it's It has a V8 in it. It's about 240 horsepower, 250 pound-feet of torque, um, body on frame, Toyota SUV. Okay. Um, so it's very similar to the 4th Gen 4Runner and FJ Cruiser. Okay. So, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Um, does it have any sort of lockers? That's something a lot of people ask. Yeah, so this one has a center differential locker, and okay. then it just has the Toyota traction control. So if you get a wheel up in the air, it'll... Um, just use the ABS to brake it. Okay. And so it, it controls wheel spin a little bit that way. Okay. So. Does it have any of those like fancy, uh, you know, uh, crawl control dials or anything like that, like some of the off road models do? Yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit more retro. So okay. it doesn't have crawl control, but what it does have is a uh, hill descent control. It's kind of Toyota's first generation of doing that. Okay. So if you have your feet off the brake going downhill, it'll just lower you down a hill without making the car skid so okay very cool all right well let's kind of move towards what suspension and tires you have so uh what size tires are you running yeah so i'm running just slightly bigger than stock tires i'm running cooper discoverers at3 um, w winter rated um tires okay uh, being in minnesota you just need a little extra <laughs> soft grit and it has siping in it to help clear the snow out okay so um yeah awesome. i got those tires they're 265 70 17s okay so the the stock is a 265 65 17 okay and then i just have them mounted on um forerunner uh sr5 wheels okay. so yeah i picked them up off of craigslist for super cheap and so <laughs> nice awesome on. Oh, well, they look brand new, so that's great. Yeah, yeah. So you removed the side running boards. Do you have uh, any plans in the future to get, like, rock sliders or something like that? or? Yeah, yeah. Do you so, feel you have more lift than you need to uh, <laughs> never need them? Yeah, so eventually I'll get rock sliders. The main reason for that is just my wife hopping in and out. You know, she doesn't mm -hmm. like uh, jumping into the car. Right, right. So, yeah. But um, like you were saying, Zach, like, I have the lift on it. Oh, true. So I have uh, Iron Man... Uh, foam cell pro shocks on there okay and um it's a it's a pretty wide body shock and um because of the foam cell in it it has more oil volume so they're pretty fade resistant okay um but the front's adjustable the rear is like a three inch lift and the front is about a two inch lift okay um factory the vehicle had air suspension which is kind of a unique thing um so you could lower and raise it but uh, for reliability's sake, I took it out. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Very so, I cool. have about a two-inch lift on the front. Um, stock upper control arms. That'll probably be the next suspension thing to upgrade. Okay. So, Very good. Yeah. So, I guess your your rake of your vehicle leans sort of forward. Is that because of a weight distribution that you have more weight in the back? Or is it just typically the, the car stock has a higher rake in the front or you know yeah, so what was your reasoning for those dimensions because typically in the back it seems like people have less lift right yeah so um stock it had um the front was really dropped down from the back and if you look at fourth gen forerunners and gx 470s they have that rake built in i don't know if toyota did it just so that the weight's forward when you're braking and stuff like that okay but um what I ended up doing is basically lifting the front and keeping the back where it was at. Um, so it just improves the look a little bit. Yeah, and, for sure. Uh, you know, maybe a little bit of front clearance. So. Yeah, for sure. Okay. 
Awesome. Well, let's talk a little bit about what you have on the roof. What did you decide to go with up there? Yeah, so I have the uh, LFD design um, crossbars. So I got those. I just have three of them um, because I want to eventually get either a rooftop tent or something like that. So um, I wanted something that was super cheap, really functional, yeah. and um, I could still put a rooftop tent on. Yep. So um, right now I just have a high lift jack mounted up there and then traction boards. Um, okay, awesome. It saved me a couple times, actually. I've been out in Colorado <laughs> and got stranded, like totally beached on top of my gas tank. So oh my goodness. We had to throw logs under there and use the traction boards, but they worked really well. So, awesome. Yeah. yeah, I know I really like the LFD crossbars because they're way better than the stock crossbars. And so you get like all the functionality of aftermarket roof racks and... But it's a really affordable option. So, yeah. like, if you want to upgrade to a nice roof rack in the future, awesome. It's compatible with, like, most rooftop tents, like you said. Yeah. Awesome. You know, and if you never even need any of those things, they're fully functional, so no need to really upgrade. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. I, kn I know LFD has released a thing um, where you can uh, put their side rails on, and so it'll, it'll create, like, a full roof rack. And you can still keep those crossbars. Oh, so okay. You can you can trade it out if you want that more aggressive, you know, metal look. Right. Or you can just keep the stock ones and then turn it back whenever you want. Okay, so. awesome. Yeah. So does that is that a full length or is that like a three quarter length? Do you um, know? I think it's I think it's about a three quarters length, just like this, um, with the sunroof being there. Um, I think they would, people just like keeping it open. Right. So. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I think there's like a, I think Gobi makes a roof rack where there's an opening there for sunroofs, but yeah. it seems like a lot of roof racks is kind of like you maybe can adjust the bars to not be over your sunroof, but most of them are kind of designed to either not get even close to the sunroof or, or they go the full length of the car. Right, right. Very yeah. cool. 2005 Lexus GX and not um, like a 2003 or four is because in 2005 they upgraded the engine slightly. So I got this one um, because it had the variable valve timing. So it's like an extra 20 horsepower in the top end of the rev range. So an extra just little kick, a okay. little extra torque. Um, so I got that for that reason. And then um, there were a couple more things that they did. Um, in the 2003 and 4, um, four runners and Lexus GX 470s, they only had a four speed transmission. So oh. I was looking for a 2005 because it had a five speed. Right. So it's essentially the same that's still in the, the Forerunner today. Okay. So it just gives you a little um, extra highway mileage and just extra torque in some gears. Okay. And then um, some of the Lexuses, they had um, the KD SS system. Mm -hmm. So basically, if. Um, the uh, opposing shocks diagonally will force a wheel down, so it helps with articulation. Um, however, the system's kind of complicated, and if you get new shocks, it's not really compatible with anything. So I chose to um, try and find a vehicle that didn't have KD SS, okay. and um, just because I didn't want the added complexity and stuff. Right. Yeah. And then one last thing: a lot of the Lexus GXs come with. Um, like a GPS screen on them. Okay. Um, however, it's not compatible with any of the modern radios or anything. So mm. you're kind of stuck with it if you get it. So I found one that had the basic, basic radio, kind of like anyone that's found in a Camry or anything like that. <laughs> but um, okay. the, the nice thing about it is you can go to a Best Buy or whatever car or audio store and just uh -huh. plug in whatever. Right. I think it's a double DIN. Um, okay radio system so awesome so yeah. i kind of went for the the basic of the basic gx um but yet with the upgraded engine and a five-speed transmission right so, awesome well yeah. those are all great reasons to uh <laughs> sounds like to get this specific year so yeah awesome yeah. all right well yeah. let's kind of circle around back here and just discuss what you got going on inside the vehicle yeah Another reason I really like the GX is just that it opens sideways like this. Yeah, I really like that too. So you just have you have wind protection when you stop. Um, so yeah, so main interior stuff that I have, 
the probably biggest piece that has really changed how um, my wife and I use this vehicle is this orange box uh, fabrication table. Okay. So um, we got it uh, custom powder coated. Okay. Um, they can build to whatever you want. If you want a logo put in there, they'll do that. Oh wow! If you want your own like YouTube channel logo, <laughs> they'll totally do okay. it up there for you. Okay. So they're really flexible to work with. That's awesome. And, um, usually our uh, our setup is we um, put our Coleman stove here. So it's a really quick setup. Okay. And we cook right off of here. Awesome. And have that set up. So you have a lot of wind protection. Right. Coleman stove sits really nice on there. Yeah, that's awesome. And then awesome. We'll, we'll just hang a trash bag off of there. So it's almost like your kitchen with your trash can next to <laughs> At it. At the end of the countertop. board. And then you got your stove. Awesome. Um, so this is... If, if you have any modification to make to your vehicle, and <laughs> your spouse or girlfriend or boyfriend, you know, isn't bought into it, get one of these yeah. and they'll see the value. <laughs> so, That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely wish there was an easy way to add that to Forerunners, but I think an aftermarket bumper is basically the, the easiest way to do it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But. Cool. Well, it looks like you've got a bit of a platform inside the vehicle. What have you got going on there? Yeah, so this is a sleeping platform that... Um, that I have. So normally I have a second piece back there that okay. um, goes basically to the back of the passenger and driver seats. Okay. And so we're able to lay full length in there. And um, the thing that I liked also about the GX, it kind of has an awkward kind of stink bug look because the back's a little bit higher. <laughs> but what that means is when you're inside it, um, you can sit a lot taller. So okay. you can sit up, you can move a little better. Right. So I like that. Um, normally, yeah, it's kind of like Land Rover Discoveries, how they have like this really tall body, but it's nice because the interior is kind of amazing that way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but uh, usually my wife and I will have two or three bins just slid under there with all our stuff in it. Um, I always carry like a spare jerry can full of gas. It's empty today. Right. And then um, just a five-gallon thing of water. Okay. Um, I did it all super cheap. So yeah. like the sleeping platform... I had spare wood. A friend had just redone their carpet, so <laughs> I just reused that. Awesome. So it was like a $10 platform. Bill. Wow. Well, there so, you go. I mean, yeah. functions just fine. Like, no need in really making something fancy because half the time it just kind of gets beat up with being outdoors. And so. Yeah, it's going to get dirty anyway. Yeah, no need to buy luxurious things if the function will work just fine, too. Yeah. And then on the side here, I have um, another orange box fabrication kind of window covering. Yeah, okay. And so you can link this into whatever Molly um, compatible gear that you have. Um, honestly, what we've ended up doing is we'll put a flashlight up there and just hang it and use it like a lantern. And then when we're going along, um, like on some of these backcountry routes that we've done, We'll just keep our cooler strapped up against there. It really doesn't move around too much. That's awesome. And so it keeps the food pretty secure. And right. We're cheap skates, so we don't have a fridge <laughs> yet or anything. And yeah. we're trying to do it on a budget so you can last two days. Yeah, no, you that's know, great. With the ice that's in there. So Very good. Yeah. And I see there's like a, a seatbelt kind of peeking at the back there. If you took all this stuff out, is this a seven-seater? It is a seven-seater. Okay, yeah. awesome. So, so some family functionality there if you're trying to... Yeah. For all of those, that, or for all of you out there that are trying to convince your wife <laughs> that you need a new family car, maybe this is a great option. So. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> There's armrests kind of um, underneath those sides over there, and um, the seats just clip right into them. And you can keep the seats in and just fold them up if you want to use the cargo area too. Oh. Okay. So awesome. it, it opens up to a pretty big area inside. Gotcha. Okay. So, Very cool. Yeah. And I presume with the current setup you have it at, your middle row is perfectly functional. Yeah. You could put those seats up if you wanted to. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, like, this winter awesome. we're going down to Arizona, but we're going to have friends with us, too, for part of it. Okay. So, we'll probably just leave that middle row in, and then I'm just going to modify the sleeping platform. That way, when the seats fold down, I just move the sleeping platform over them, and okay. we're good to go. Very so. good. Kind of like an all-in trunk sort of unit. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All righty. Well, thank you so much for just showing us around your your uh, Overland build. It's fun to also see a lot of, like, functional builds because I think most people are not wanting to put 
the money into a vehicle that a lot of the big channels on YouTube have. So yeah, I yeah. think it's fun to just see how people have built it out to be still just as functional as those rigs, but not sinking every name brand and <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know expensive product into them. So yeah, definitely. Thanks so much for giving us a walk around. Yeah, right. sure.